Hi, everyone. It's Monica Ramirez here, co-founder of the Latinx House, and we are so pleased to have you with us. We are going to be having an incredible conversation with some fierce Latinas who are making change in and for our community. They're, they're trailblazers. So we are going to be joined today by Isabel, Doris, and Jax, who are going to talk about the beautiful, phenomenal, and really powerful film, Mija. We congratulate you all from the bottom of our heart for making it into the festival this year. So exciting, so thrilled for you. And Christina is a veteran, so she'll be able to share in some of that excitement and, and joy with you as well. Well, here's a little bit that we want you to know about this conversation. There's lots of conversations happening across our country about immigration, and this movie takes a special take on that issue. You'll hear more about that through this panel conversation. And Christina, through her work, has also helped to take viewers to really important and complex places when thinking about this issue. Christina is a Sundance award-winning filmmaker with a 20-year practice that's rooted in her border crossing routes along the Texas-Mexico border. The Infiltrators is the film that she won at Sundance with. It's a docu-thriller about undocumented activism on the secret mission inside a detention center. It's currently being distributed. The film won the Audience and the Innovator Award in the next section at Sundance Film Festival in 2019. And she's won other notable awards, including being named a recent MacArthur Genius Award winner. I'm gonna let Christina introduce you and help us all get to know Doris, and Isabel, and Jax better. But again, from the bottom of our hearts at the Latinx House, it is our true honor to have you all here with us today. Thank you, Monica. It is such a pleasure to be here. I just wanted everyone here to please um, help us um, get to know you. If you could introduce yourselves, um, we can start with Isabel, the director of the film, and you can kick us off. Yeah, I'm, I'm Isabel. I'm the director, producer, and cinematographer of the film. Um, and these wonderful, wonderful women um, are uh, the, the stars of the film. So um, I'll just kick it off to Doris. Hi, my name is Doris Anay Munoz. Um, I am the subject, one of the subjects of, of this film. Uh, it's so hard to do introductions, but I am the founder of Casa Mija, formerly known as Mija Management, and now Solidarity for Sanctuary. And life is wild, and now we're here at Sundance. So thank you so much for having me. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Jax Hawk. I am a singer from Dallas, Texas, uh, and I've been making music since I was like a kid in high school, since like 14, 15, all in my phone. And it's, I'm very grateful to be here and sitting here. And, and I'm very grateful to be sitting in front of these two ladies that literally um, put me in the film. Very grateful for both of them. Fantastic, thank you for that. I'm just curious um, if you had heard of Sundance uh, or what, what did you know about this festival before becoming involved in this project. Um, and then also just following up, what do you think needs to be done to make festivals like these um, more uh, available to our community? Well, I think being in the entertainment industry, there is an intersect that you see between music and film and TV. And I think through the friends that I've made as I've been coming up in my own journey, I've been just circling around Sundance and the importance of what that means for, for filmmakers. Um, one of my best friends is an amazing director too. And so she's been having her own experience and her journey coming up through that and having beautiful mentors in her life and seeing Sundance as an opportunity, like hearing her coming back from like her first weekend in the snow and her experiences actually at the lovely next house and macro and like all these um, beautiful moments of like fruition. And so coming to this space now virtually, I think is like how, um, we are making accessibility a possibility. I mean, I was bummed at first that we can't be together in the snow, like super frio together. But the fact that this is virtual now, um, you know, my my tias in Mexico get to see this and, and my friends that I made through every chapter in my life now get to see this or the kids that, I, you know, that um, come from my hood get to see this, you know, so. Um, there's, I understand there's a hybrid that would have happened anyway, you know, but the fact that we all get to experience this premiere in person together, I think speaks volumes that this film is for us, by us, and that we get to simultaneously unveil um, these moments, these super vulnerable moments in our life, uh, rather than just 
the folks who have um, the ability to make their way uh, to to Utah. So, we're, but we're here now. So, um, I honestly never really envisioned myself anywhere. I, you know, I'm as an artist. I feel like a lot of artists are very hard on themselves, and they just really don't see themselves in the big screen. We usually, you know, we struggle, and we're here for like. We, we're here for the struggle phase. And I think that's what makes an artist so strong and important. And it's like, I, I really never imagined myself somewhere like this, but I did hear of Sundance before. Um, a lot of my favorite films are, you know, from Sundance and it's crazy, you know, I never really knew what it was about. I, I really never knew what the process is until I was in the position today. And it's kind of insane, you know, I'm, I'm still like, telling my you know family it's like um in Sunday so they're just like no te creo like they don't believe <laughs> me so it's like it's honestly insane to be the first one in the family so I'm kind of glad and very proud and grateful to be here well it's well deserved <laughs> congratulations <laughs> thank you so much what, what does it feel like to be here is this uh did you imagine yourself here with this film <laughs> oh man I mean it feels crazy I think for every filmmaker ever it's like it it's it's every filmmaker's biggest dream and um i i've been making films since i was 18 i have always dreamt of you know one day playing at sundance not every filmmaker has the opportunity of that insane honor um but i think what makes it particularly special for me is that um, even though this film is about Doris and Jax, it's a deeply, deeply personal film. And it's one that talks about themes and topics that um, I am extremely passionate about and my work is based around. And so for, for my feature debut to be at Sundance and for it to be about this story um, and telling the stories of women like Jackson and Doris, who are, are ultimately the people I look up to the most in my life. Um, it's, it's just like an insane, insane honor. And, and also I, I love, I'm a big music fan. Like I've always um, been a huge, huge music um, fan. I have a terrible voice. Doris loves to remind me of that. <laughs> no, but I, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She's, she's not that mean, but she, um, but I did, I never, you know, I, I think there's a lot of overlap in different creative professions. And I think what's been particularly cool about making this film is that, um, I get to ultimately like, collaborate with like all these different types of mediums. Um, and I just love, love the process of collaboration. It's what led me to filmmaking in the first place. I love how you see it as a collaboration. Um, you know, this it really explains a lot about the, the way you were able to get these moments of vulnerability that are incredibly um, intimate. And I, I almost feel like I'm watching someone's confessional. Um, almost like a video diary, but it's, you know, it's a, a conversation that you're, you're able to get through your relationship. Um, I'm just wondering for uh, Doris and Jax, like, how did, how did you feel um, having a film made about these really uh, vulnerable moments where you don't really quite know what's going to happen, and you're just, like, revealing your soul, really? You, there has to be some level of comfort and trust. Like, how, how did Isabel convince you that this was okay? <laughs> Well, <laughs> um, I mean, I'm lucky that that Jax was even down when at the season that she came into my life when I was like, hey, there's this thing happening and si te avientas, si no te avientas. Um, and she's the kind of person if you put something in front of her, se avienta. Like she, she's just down. And um, I mean, it's kind of wild how things came together for me and Isabel. She had approached me beginning of 2019 on a different project it couldn't happen and then months later went by and I told this story to friends so I'm, I'm glad we have an opportunity to tell the story now because it's kind of wild because it was like you know mass manifesting and it was like around the time that I was tapping into that like superpower within me that I didn't know um and I wrote down a list of things that I needed um that I felt like I still needed to complete for Selena for Sanctuary that we were throwing this concert 
at Central Park Summer Stage, which you see um, like one of the first scenes of the film. And I wrote down her name um, in, in parentheses and a square around it because on the list I put like mini doc style piece because I thought, you know, maybe she'd want to make a mini documentary about um, this concert that we throw uh, for the times, you know, and she called me the next day. I did not reach out to her. She called me after I wrote her name down on the list and I was freaking out. Like, I was like, Isabel, like what? Like, cause she was like, hey, sorry, I haven't heard, you haven't heard from me in a few months. I've been like, in like, where were you in Guatemala? Uh, Isabel, where were you? I was in, yeah, I was in, I was in El Salvador in Guatemala. Oh, I was. You were in Central America working on the pandemic series. Yes. And like, she's like, I've been knee deep in this other project, but like, I'm in LA right now and I'm taking all these meetings and your name keeps coming up. And I realized that the story is about you. And I was like, wait, what? Like, cause she had approached me about this, you know, feature length documentary that she has an opportunity to develop. And it's just wild to me that like how things aligned in that way. And that's just, yeah, all the, the, the flood of thoughts rushed in my head where I'm like, am I in the right space to be able to open up my life to something like this? Like, um, I don't know what this life has to bring me in the next couple of years too. Like everything is in flux, but uh, we met in New York a couple of weeks later, like right before the Selena for Sanctuary show. And so I felt like I, I knew her my whole life. Um, and it was kind of wild. This was a moment that sealed the deal for me where like we were waiting outside of a building to go in for, for a performance of a, a previous client and um, we were waiting for like a lighter or something like that like and we run into my old boss like the first boss that I had in the music industry that um, the reason why he let me go is why I started Miha Management and we had this whole moment of like oh I just saw you on TV I read the most recent article and Isabel was like damn it I wish I had my camera up for this but that's when I knew I was just like wow these are the full circle moments I need to happened for me to just be like okay Doris like it is time to like tell your story and uh, um, you know you needed a film like this you know and, and Isabel just makes it easy you know I think we, we built trust over the years but um, I, I consider her family and like I think like that's what allowed us to be able to step into these very intimate portraits of our lives. I don't know Jax or how, how was your experience? <laughs> 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 um honestly it was a very tough decision it was also like the most hardest thing to do not the film the film process was easy easy as a pod it was just stuff that was going around me in my world here in Texas it was pretty tough I had a couple of interactions with my family members and I'm not gonna spoil the movie I like but you know it just you know my my family wasn't okay with it at all I was, I was just, I felt alone. And that's when Isabel, you know, talked to me. She was like, hey, we're filming this documentary. Are you, are, will you be able to, and are you down? And I was like, oh, like, should I? Like, I was even telling my friends at the time, I was like, I don't even know what to do, bro, because I have nothing, like, you know? And I was like, you know what? You know, you know who knows how this will happen or this, this will go. And I ended up meeting Doris in person for the first time. And I also ended up meeting Isabel for the first time. Um, and before Doris, it, it was it was crazy because it, she made me feel like I wasn't alone, and she made me feel like we were we connected. And and as well as Doris, we all connected. And I, it was a special connection that I I can't share with anyone else. And that's what made the filming really easy. And that's what made it feel like you know it's not even there. This is just how life is for different people. And I think it, it was very important for me to be in this documentary and very, I'm very grateful for this opportunity because I want to show that a lot of young kids, a lot of immigrant kids are not even, you know, immigrant, every single person in this life wanting to make it out as an artist, that it is very possible. Um, you don't know you know what chance, you know, you don't know what you'll get. You know, life is like Jeopardy, like you're playing Jeopardy. And it, I think it was a very, amazing experience to have all, all of our lives filmed in this documentary. And I wanna appreciate Isabel and everybody behind the documentary team and Doris for, for this incredible, amazing opportunity. Yes, no, I, we, 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 the audience also are, are lucky um, to be able to get such honesty and, and bravery with this representation. And um, I, it, you know, my props to Isabel because like, you were able to 
um, really respect these moments that were um, revelatory. And, you know, I don't know, I guess they, they feel uh, from what I'm hearing from Jack's potentially dangerous in this emotionally in, in the, that sense that you're, you're kind of trusting someone to just like shape them and take care of them. Um, was this the intention from the beginning, Isabel, or um, did you shift? Totally. I, I think, um, I, and just to quickly just extrapolate on Doris and Jack's, uh, Jax's um, answers about our relationship, like I think ultimately what, um, I, I think a lot of the intimacy in the film is a reflection of the fact that um, there's a lot, there are a lot of similarities in some of our stories. Um, there's a lot of differences too. Um, and, you know, we all come from different parts of the country. Um, and, you know, Latinidad is, it's like a huge spectrum in terms of how it manifests, um, it, it, especially in different places. But I think ultimately we both under, we all understood what it meant to be the children of immigrants and like the pressure that that uh, the pressure of that experience. And I think when I set out to make this film, it was really what I wanted to do first and foremost was um, get closer to what that experience felt like for me and for the hundreds of families or children's of Im children of immigrants that I've met through my work. I don't get me started on immigration policy in the country, but. I, I also think that that experience is really a lot more complicated and nuanced than, um, than a lot of stories make it out to be. Like I, I wanted to show that there, were, there are really complicated emotions that are at play as well. Um, emotions like guilt, emotions like anger, em emotions like resentment, emotions like, uh, you know, there's family separation even within families in the United States because of mixed statuses. Um, and it's really complicated. And, and so I think that this film at, at its heart, I think that's what it's trying to do is just show the nuance of that experience. Um, and also, um, and, you know, also show that like, all of those feelings are also okay, you know, like that, um, I, you know, I think through Doris and Jax's stories, I hope viewers can see their stories and realize that, um, that their those feelings are normal. Um, and there are also, you know, thousands of other, you know, Latinas and Latinos and Latines in the country that are experiencing very similar things um, and that there is community in that. I'm curious uh, with with Doris, um, you know, you've been doing this now um, for a bit and you've learned, you've probably taken some lessons from the, the way you've been dealing with uh, representation in, in your industry. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you, maybe you've learned, any, any takeaways that you might have at this point to share with us about representation? Um, in the music industry and your your role and how you're changing that idea? For sure. I I think, yeah, I think I arrived at, um, at the realization that what was the use of me continuing to fight for like one seat at the table um, if my friends couldn't come along with me too? And that's when like it revolutionized like my approach where I was like, okay, I guess we're just gonna build the whole friggin' table for all of us to eat together. You know, it's like, what's the point of doing this? Uh, trying to climb my way into this industry that isn't necessarily making it as welcoming as, as I'd imagined or not even imagine. Cause like I had always had this thought of like, how do people even get there? You know, like growing up as like a fangirl, you know and like being first in line and like at the barricade like how do people get on stage? Like how do people market their music? How do they end up on magazines? And then slowly but surely like my journey um, you know, changing career paths in college like doing unpaid internship after unpaid internship, being the only Latina in the room most of the time, I realized that like, I was the one who was like alley-ooping my friends into like new internship opportunities or um, or gig opportunities. And I was like, wait, like we can build a whole world around this. And so 
that's when I tapped into world building before I even knew what world building <laughs> really was. And so I think like, uh, I think maybe it was one time when I was, it was when I was interning at, at Sony, like my last year of college and, and I was in the elevator and um, it was right before, I was doing two internships at, at that time. And, and like, there was like one Latina in the elevator. I was like, where are you? And like, where'd you come from? And like, of course she was like, visiting from like Sony Latin, like the Miami office, you know? And it was like shortly after that, when like Miguel did like a secret show at school night where I used to intern for two. And I, he was the kindest artist I'd ever worked with. And like one of the biggest artists I ever worked with at the time, I was like 20 years old. And it was shortly after my brother had been deported too. And um, he was so kind to me and was asking me how my day was going when I was walking to the stage. And I was just very excited, like sharing him, like how my brother put me onto his music. And he asked me if my brother was at the concert there that night because he would love to say hello. And like my heart just shattered. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna like ruin this fool's night and be like, my brother just got deported, you know? Like that's messed up. And, but it planted something in me where I just told him, I was like, oh, my brother's in Mexico, but like, uh, I'll make, he's like, oh, well, tell him I say hello. I was like, well, thank you. I appreciate that. And like that night forever changed my life where I was like, oh, I gotta do something about this. Like if I'm fighting my way in, then like I'm, we're, I'm the Trojan horse then. Like we're all, we're all coming through together because like what's yeah like what's the point and so yeah growing up like listening to like indie rock bands and being that like rockera en la familia and like not really being represented by the artists that were on that stage um there was just this fire that that was in me to to want more of us on these stages on these screens in in these opportunities you know and so it just, it just grew. It just, it just kept growing as we kept building community and people kept showing up, you know, like from like the first backyard show that I ever saw Kuko play, it was like in some, out of a garage in like East LA, you know, and I saw like 200 kids like singing every single lyric in English and Spanish and like, yo soy llorona. And like, I was just there crying. Like I needed a space like that when I was a teenager. Um, and then I had this um, insane gut feeling to like, not pursue a full-time job to like start my own thing. And I started my own management company and then we're off to the races. And then like a year later, we are like at every US festival and around the world. Um, and then when things started changing in my career and then I come across somebody like Jax like early 2020 and I'm like, again, I felt this like insane gut feeling of just like, wow, like this girl's gonna like change the world. Like they're like the world is gonna see this, you know, it's not, um, it's not just like this like corner that they like to put us in of like, here is like your like Latin music industry corner. Like we, it was that, that night of the Miguel show that, that um, really changed that notion for me where it's like, we belong in the general market, you know, like we, we belong in a global market. And of course we're gonna represent Latinidad, but we're gonna take that everywhere, not just where they want us to, to leave it, you know? I am curious how these limited um, representations, especially inside of the music industry, have impacted you, Jackson, with your dialogues that you're having at home. Like, is there, are you feeling um, kind of that there's a, there's, an, there's a way to talk about music and your choices that are changing with your relationship now with Doris? Um, yeah, I feel like we've gotten closer throughout the time. Um, I remember when I first like kept like giving her some like demos and you know I, I was even freaking out at the time and in, in the middle of the pandemic because I was telling my friends I was like oh my goodness like does she not want me anymore I was like overthinking and I was like re like making more demos and stuff and I was like here I made four demos I hope you like them and they're like just you know I really stuff that I made on my phone and I feel like throughout the, the years of us um, being, you know, together and connecting and, you know, talking, I feel like we've had a lot in common and I feel like we share a different bond. And it's it's crazy because I've always felt like left out. And I, when, I, when, I, when I would feel, you know, a certain way, I would tell Doris, you know what, I sometimes feel like giving up or I don't, I don't feel, you know, like I'm actually doing a great job as an artist and she motivates me in another way. And I feel like whenever, you know, we first conversed, we were both going through a really hard time in the middle of a pandemic. And I feel like that is the, the spark of the connection. 
And I feel like throughout time, it, it felt like she felt like a family member. And she was someone I, you know, would tell her very personal things. And, and she would tell me, you know, oh, well, I'm going through this. And we really understood each other. And uh, our connection actually really grew throughout the time. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, Isabel, you, you were uh, brought this up, um, the idea that there's a, there's one type of seeing an immigration story and that you're hoping this film can show us a, a, a more nuanced way of looking at, at that issue. I feel like these conversations, Jacks, that you're bringing up between you and Doris, they, that, that's what they're, they're about. It's how immigration is impacting your life, your personal life. Um, and Isabel, can you talk to us a little bit more about how your decision to show things from that more personal perspective and, and why that's so important. Um, what do you what do you think um, we can learn from this different way of, of talking about the immigration story in the United States? Totally. I mean, I um, so I've I've been covering immigration stories throughout my personal work for the last uh, ten years um, and. Through my work and through other work that I've, you know, I've done for various news outlets, I, I I've realized, like I've, um, I felt a little bit stunted by my ability to connect to maybe possibly a wider audience, um, and I think what's exciting, what I've been trying to figure out how to do is how to have. I Doris used this term earlier, this phrase earlier how to have like a Trojan horse approach towards um, talking about some of these topics. Um, and that's where Miha was born out of. Like, uh, I love music. Um, I love like listening to it. I love watching it. Um, I, I wanted to find a story um, with young protagonists um, who were either going or are going through some of the same things I've gone through in my creative career. Um, and I, my hope is that through kind of trying to create some universality in those, in those stories, um, uh, in that story, um, which is ultimately one also about representation, um, that viewers would also possibly learn something about immigration as well. Um, and possibly um, uh, maybe learn something emotionally about immigration. Um, I think, you know, again, through a lot of my journalism work, I've tried to approach the topic from talking about facts and going to the border and showing like, um, showing the incredible pain of what this experience um, and what these US policies can, um, what, what they can do. Um, but, uh, but in Miha specifically, I wanted to kind of show a different emotional spectrum, uh, emotional range. Um, I wanted to show, for example, that Doris as the only American born member in her family has the entire weight you know, grew up with a lot of weight on her shoulders and the a lot, a lot of pressure. And, you know, at some point in the movie, she admits that there were moments where her brothers resented her um, because they had DACA and she had papers. Um, in Jax's story, she's, she's also was the first born American member of her family um, and also experiences a lot of pressure from her family because of that. Um, and, and there's a lot of guilt with that experience. And, and, and so I wanted to show that like those, I wanted to like really explore those emotions because there's not one, they're not ones that I often see um, told in stories around immigration. And furthermore, um, I wanted to show that despite the incredible like weight of immigration on families and on all of us, um, the day-to-day -day experiences of, of many immigrants and children of immigrants in the country are not entirely informed by that. Um, we all have different dreams. We all have different desires um, that are not exclusively tied to our immigration status because I just don't want to give too much weight to that. Um, and, and for Jackson Doris, 
it, it is tied to wanting to be musicians and to create art. Um, and so, um, so that's, that's how Miha, that, that's what Miha, the, the secret, which I will reveal <laughs> in this panel is that this was always gonna be a story about immigration, but I wanted to trick people um, and, uh, and make it about something else. And hopefully new viewers might watch the film because of Doris and Jax's amazing music. And then, um, and along the way, they might realize they're watching an immigration story um, is my hope. I feel like in general, I, feel, I want to, let's say if a, a older parent or somebody older is actually watching the film and they're honestly an immigrant and they have also kids that live in the US, this can really impact the way they think and maybe it could change them in a different way. Like, oh, I'm, I'm watching this film and I have kids on my own too and I am also an immigrant. I probably shouldn't do that or I probably shouldn't think that way. I will support my children into doing whatever they want to do. Um, I think that is kind of like the goal for like the film is like to hit in a different way to a lot of people. And, and I want that to be especially a big impact to a lot of, you know, immigrants or kids that are actually immigrants, you know, like it is I, like anything's possible. And, you know, as an immigrant parent, it's, it's really hard to be very accepting towards our kids, especially when they want to do something else that's not involving school. So I think I like, I hope that it does have a big impact to a lot of a lot of people, especially, um, you know, a lot of the Latin community, you know, like you're not alone. You won't ever face this alone. There are people like us, you know, that we go through this battle that we're scared to do a certain thing because our parents might not approve. And it's, I, I, I think it will be very impactful for a lot of, a lot of kids in the Latin community. Yeah, I mean, based off of piggybacking off of what Jax is saying, like, um, in reflection of like, our hopes of, you know, reaching the parents, like, um, I think my journey throughout this whole film, why I even said yes to this film, um, is because I needed a film like this when I was a teenager, you know, growing up with the fear, the constant fear of like family separation looming over my head, you know, like I, I, um, when my family like endured that process, like I went through this, like really, I'm, I don't want to get emotional over this like season of my life where I was like looking up like reunion videos on YouTube, you know, just to like pray that like that'll finally happen for my family one day, you know? And so knowing that like teenage stories needed this film, you know, to feel like an ounce of hope for my own family. I just hope that for whoever is going through that experience, um, especially as they're trying to navigate, like being a first generation kid in this country, trying to find their path and whatever career they want to pursue. Like there's so much weight that we have to carry that others who, um, who don't have to think about immigration status that have to deal with, you know? And so to know that they're not alone in that process, like whatsoever. And I think like, that's the beauty um, of the power of representation. Like it's kind of wild today's, well, the time that we're home is, is January 13th, um, 2022 and exactly 20 years ago today is when Real Women Have Curbs was, was released. And that was the first form of representation I had um, of thinking like, oh, like I'm a girl, like, I'm not you know, like America, like, and I had dreams of like going to New York for college to pursue a creative um, career one day, you know, and to think that this film, that film was premiered at Sundance and like, obviously it was reflected like Josefina Lopez's story and the now full circle with this, you know, like America was like my first form of representation. And now I just think about like, um, the fact that art precedes us, you know, like this film is gonna still exist beyond my years that I'm on this planet and for the generations to come that need something like this, like they'll have access to it, you know, and maybe I'll be that first form of, will be that first form of representation for those young girls that really need it. So it's always serving the inner child, serving the inner teenager that just need to feel like 
yeah, like they're not alone because there are folks like us who have climbed that journey and have found community in the process. I'm curious uh, for all of you um, what you're going to do next. Um, I'm just going to release music, make new music and continuing the process of making art. I feel like that's, I love doing art. I love doing what I do. And I feel like this opportunity of being in the film is going to actually like expand the horizon for a lot of us and especially um i really like hope that the latin community um gets to see this and gets to feel how we feel genuinely um and i i hope one day my parents actually watch it and they're like oh my god like i hope that they change the way they think for my siblings as well because i also think about them and i also know that they also have dreams and certain things can't go because our parents are immigrants, you know? And I hope that I get to set a perfect ex example as a role model to my younger siblings and to a lot of kids out there too. And um, yeah, I would uh, think from now on, I just like to continue to pursue my art. Dax is on her road to becoming a superstar. So I hope <laughs> I'm like, this is um, your chance to say I was there early. <laughs> <laughs> I know I joke about it all the time I'm gonna go to both their shows and they're gonna be like oh, oh we don't know her <laughs> no. <laughs> like, no I promise you I know that I'm on the list <laughs> I believe family I mean like we've um we both have like gone through so much throughout the course of of the making of this film I mean like when Isabel and I first started I thought I was in a very different place in my life, saw a very different trajectory for my career, um, experienced a very intense pivot, unnecessary pivot that happened in that, you know, was a pandemic induced pivot, like like many really, really um, allowed me to reflect on, on what my grander purpose on, on this earth is. And that I know that it's at the core of it is music and, um, even like, you know, meeting someone like Jax has been like, um, there's like a really beautiful quote that I've always held on to that like artists um, appear in your life as like angels sometimes, you know? And I think like that has been a journey for me to understand like um, myself. And so in what's next, um, I still, the overarching goal is to help support the like, the longevity of the Latinx, you know, presence in the music community. Um, I, I launched this mentorship program last year that has helped a lot of kids get their first like full-time jobs within the music industry. So that's been extremely fulfilling. So uh, really understanding like what the next chapter of that is, because I think that is, um, it's like, it scratched that itch of me wanting to be a, a teacher for a long time. And then ultimately I think this process of, of filmmaking has um, really made me realize that the way, the reason why I love music is because I grew up performing, you know, and so, um, yeah, music, finally music to come to, and so in supporting one another um, in, in that journey, so uh, realizing that the, the biggest purpose I have us on this planet is to share my voice, whether it is through music or through my story or through supporting others. Um, in whatever way that I can along in this in this journey too. Well, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like make a plug. They're both putting out music, um, and y'all should definitely listen to it because it's amazing. Um, you get a taste of Doris's in the film, and it's unbelievable. And Jax's new music is on repeat in my <laughs> freaking car. Um, you guys are gonna. I you also. I think there's three, two or three tracks in the film, but she's going to be releasing her music too. So um, just a plug. <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm doing next. I, um, yeah, well, I, uh, I don't know yet, um, but I, I hope to, I think I get, I'm excited to be um, contributing to a legacy of amazing, of, uh, Latinas premiering their films at in the next category. I'm really, really inspired by your work, but also just by the work of doc uh, documentarians kind of pushing the boundaries of um, what the medium does. Um, and so um, whatever, whatever story my next 
uh, documentary is. Um, I intend on it kind of being um, stylistically uh, pushing my own boundaries. I just, I get really excited by that creative challenge. So I don't know what that looks like yet, but um, but that's kind of the, the thing driving, uh, motivating me right now. I just need to find a good story. Just no, no easy thing. <laughs> Please, everyone, go watch it. Um, but with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up, and um, I just appreciate all of you so much. I'm gonna watch out for those releases, and those music releases, and uh, please go watch the movie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have you ever thought of what?